you've made a vinyl design in Inkscape or other vector software and now you need to send your work to your vinyl cutter but you'll need another piece of software to do that shipped with the Pixmax vinyl cutters the one that I'm using is a one-year subscription to SignCut Pro 2 it's also available separately for other cutters here's the absolute minimum you need to know to cut your first design with SignCut Pro 2 Here's a really simple design, a number 10, and before we can cut it out, we first need to ensure that all the objects are converted to paths. An object is anything on the screen that you've created in its initial form, and a path is made of lines connected by points called nodes, both of which you can freely edit. A node will always be present where the line changes direction or curves. As your vinyl cutter only recognises the nodes as waypoints to cut to, any object not converted to paths won't show up in the SignCut Pro 2. Be careful with more complex designs as it's easy to miss one or more objects from being converted, which will create extra work for you later. With your work converted and saved, it's time to open it in SignCut Pro 2. So when you first open SignCut, you're going to be presented with this SignCut logo, uh, which is a multiple colour graphic, which I'm just going to leave there for a second so I can show you one of the features straight away. Uh, and over on the right hand side here, you'll see a number of coloured tiles, and all these tiles represent different colours in the logo. So if I just click on the first one, it's going to isolate just that colour. Now what this means is you don't have to separate the colours in your software and save them separately and load them separately. You can just load the whole graphic and SignCut Pro will sort it all out for you. So I'll just click on another one and show you the burgundy one and all the other composite bits that make up that logo. Of course it's just um, it's down to you to load your cutter with the correct vinyl it can't do that bit for you, but it is really handy and a huge labour saving effort. So now we've got our number 10 loaded into the workspace and you can see over on the right hand side those colours from the initial example have reduced down to just the one for this project, the orange. And over on the left hand side you'll see a number of icons. Now these are all fairly advanced and we won't be touching these in, in this tutorial. We'll be concentrating just on the first one, the collection of commonly used tools. With the commonly used tools selected, you'll see over on the right hand side, there is a little explanation of what each one does. Um, it doesn't go into masses of detail, so let's just quickly go through each one. Now the first one is the pointer tool. It says move and delete tile lines and weeding lines. At the minute we don't have anything on there, so let's just create a tile line. Let's just put that there. And then if you wanted to move that, um, we're still in the weeding tool. So if you click again, you're going to just create another line. You can delete these by right clicking on the one you don't want. So if I just go back to the pointer tool, we can now grab that and move it where we want. Now what this is doing is if I go to cut, it'll just give us a cut preview. It splices the image into two sections. Now for this number 10, it's not so important because that is going to fit on a bit of vinyl we've got in the print, in the cutter. But if you've got a longer design that won't fit the width of your vinyl or the cutter itself, then you can use these tiling uh, lines to break up the design into sections which you can then reassemble at a later point, which is really useful for doing much bigger work than your vinyl or your machine will let you do. The next one is the weeding tool, with uh, the weeding line tool, so we just click on, it's going to look similar, it creates a, an extra cut line, if I just go to the cutting page, and you can see the outline of the number 10, that's the path of the blade is going to follow and we're going to put in these extra weeding lines. Now this again on this number 10 it's a nice simple design, don't really need it but on more complicated and intricate designs these are really useful because it means you don't have to start pulling away the waste material at one corner and taking the whole lot off in one go. Um, the vinyl as you'll find out if you haven't already it sticks to itself really really well and once you start pulling at it, it stretches really easily, so you can ruin work pretty quick, um, and these extra weeding lines really help minimise that. The next tool is the snapping registration mark. 
Now what this does is create a point of reference. I'll just put one there and say one there. Um, when you cut out, if you just go back to the cutting page, you'll see it's drawn in these little diamonds and they can be used to align multiple colors so you can work quite accurately. Now most of my stuff uh, tend to work quite small little projects, uh, but I would imagine on larger stuff, it would be really useful to make sure you get everything lined up. I don't use them, well, mainly because I'm pretty amazing at doing this now, so I don't need them. Uh, but uh, yeah, it can be quite useful for larger projects. The next few are fairly self-explanatory. This is activate or deactivate the tiles by clicking inside them. Uh, you've already seen how the tiling works, so it just basically turns it on and off. And these two activate all registration marks in the active layer and deactivate all registration marks in the active layer. Pretty, pretty straightforward stuff. Next up, we've got create automatic weeding lines. This is really good because you can just click on it and it will work out probably the best place to put an extra weeding line. Uh, again, number 10, don't really need it, but uh, you'll see as your projects get more and more complex, you might find that really handy. Then we move on to rotate image in 90 degree steps. Now this is pretty handy if you've got a longer design that's maybe a little bit wider than your vinyl and you want to you do it all in one go so it works a bit similar to the tiling that we've already looked at but uh, it's better for smaller things that are just a bit too wide for your width of your vinyl so we'll just click on that it will rotate again not a great example because this uh, design is pretty much square but you can see how that works and now you can use it to your advantage then we've got Rotation for minimum vinyl consumption. So we'll just click on that. You'll see the software's working out the smallest area that we can fit that number 10 into to maximize our vinyl consumption, uh, or rather minimize our waste, so we can um, get the most for our money on our supplies. And the last one is mirror image. Now this is really useful for creating uh, stickers for windows so you can just click on that it will just flip the design into a mirror image and that what that effectively does is put your adhesive on the other side of your design so you can stick it on the inside of glass so it's ideal for car windows um, shop fronts all that kind of stuff and it means you don't have to do it in your software you can just design it as you want in the software export it to SignCut, and let SignCut do the work and the last bit to talk about here is the cutout screen, which we've already seen a couple of times. I won't go into too much detail on this one, but we'll just go through the uh, settings on this first page. Calculated vinyl consumption just gives you an idea of how much vinyl area you're going to use. Uh, the number of copies you're going to do. And the distance between copies and tiles. This is quite, I'll just put another one in there. You can really get these tightened up and it just saves you on um, the vinyl consumption a little bit. And you can uh, you can change how tight you want that just by changing those values. The weeding frame distance is much the same. It's the uh, tightness of the line on the outside to the design. So that black line, you can adjust how tight you want it. If you come in too narrow, uh, you might find that as the blade passes past its first cut, you'll you'll chew up the design, so you want to leave yourself a bit of a border there. Stack copies and tiles, it just makes best use of your the width of vinyl. So as long as you've entered in the correct width of vinyl on your machine, you'll be fine. It'll be able to work out exactly how much um, material to use for you. Use a weeding frame. I always use a weeding frame because it just uh, saves saves me hand cutting it. Uh, it only takes a second on the machine. And position after cutting is end after job. It will just return back to its start uh, position on the machine, the cutting head. And there is one other useful little feature, uh, this animate button. You can just press play and you can see the path of the cutter head is going to take. It kind of simulates the cut it's about to do. So all that's left now is to hit cut out and get our number cut in vinyl. So I'm just finishing off my freshly cut number 10. 
if you've stayed with me this far thanks very much um, if you've got any questions about this video or um, even any ideas for future videos you'd like to see me make on this kind of stuff please do leave a comment and I'll, I'll do my best to accommodate that speaking of future videos I like to include my viewers cars in my videos uh, and base art around them so uh, I, I do like vinyl vinyl art from photographs and I do digital art on Affinity Designer and uh, Inkscape. So if you'd like to see your car included in one of the videos, leave a comment and I'll, I'll see if we can make it happen for you. I'll leave a link to a video that I've already created using one of my viewers' cars. Um, if it's the sort of thing you like, then um, get in touch. My name's Dan and this is Petrol Vectors.